Police responding to reports of suspicious devices. Police went location by location. Fearing a terror attack. One huge massive mess. Boston officials closed off roads. All of this is a television coverage across the city and around the world. It's a hoax and it's not funny. This month, Aqua Teen Hunger Force made its return with Aquadunk side pieces. Digital shorts showcasing villains from the classic Adult Swim series that also feature one of the funniest credit sequences I've ever seen. They got me thinking about the time a failed ad campaign for the show's theatrical debut introduced their most deadly enemy yet, the city of Boston. Look, it's Boston, and it's a bomb. I know this topic has been covered by numerous channels already, but I got the chance to shoot a few of the locations in Boston where it all went down. Just ignore that Fenway Park renumbered their gates and pretend that this match shot looks impressive. Plus, next month I'll be talking about films based on animated series in the city where this whole fiasco began. I'll be at Momocon from May 26th to the 29th at the Georgia World Congress Center in Atlanta. On Friday the 27th at 11.30, don't miss my live Cartoons Go to the Movies panel. Follow me on Twitter at It's Nintendo and subscribe to see my community posts in your feed for more details and updates. It's gonna be the best glorified PowerPoint presentation ever. Now for a graceful transition. Let's talk about 9-11. By the mid-2000s, America was in the midst of the War on Terror, set into motion by the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center in 2001. The phrase, if you see something, say something, came into prominence after originating in an advertising campaign for the New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority. It would be adopted by major cities throughout the country, encouraging citizens to report suspicious activity that they perceived as threats to protect their local communities. Now here's the part that every video covering Adult Swim's history has, where you see footage of of old people swimming and you hear bum bum all kids out of the pool for adult swim bum 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 all kids out hey it works for a reason nine days prior to 9 11 cable channel cartoon network launched their late night programming block adult swim its early years will be defined by shows that combined awkward surreal humor with limited visuals their breakout hit was the laid-back aqua teen hunger force a series that revolved around these suburban adventures of three anthropomorphic fast food items Dancing is forbidden. By 2002, Adult Swim's characters began to appear in cross promotions for brands like the Dodge Ram and ATT Collect Calls, which helped the block gain more popularity amongst young adults and led to its presence on the network being expanded. At the 2005 Paley Television Festival, Aqua Teen creators Matt Malero and Dave Willis announced that a feature film adaptation was in the works, titled Aqua Teen Hunger Force Colon Movie Film for Theaters, and a nationwide promotional stunt was created to advertise it. Cartoon Network had experienced marketing on a similar scale with their red campaign, better known as the Yes era. I think these ads can be best described as a high energy take on Adult Swim's bumpers, combined with random video loops of characters. They can also be described as incredibly annoying. TV! TV, 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 TV. <laughs> In the summer of 2006, 25 billboards in the United States were decorated with odd catchphrases like I pooted and my boogers itch. After making national news for two weeks, they were swapped out with versions that displayed their quotes corresponding characters and the Cartoon Network logo, revealing the billboards to be ads for programs like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends and The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Point is, they loved confusing people who dared to look at their ads or billboards. A few months later, a small guerrilla marketing group, Interference Inc., was hired by Cartoon Network to create a scavenger hunt inspired by electronic graffiti, building up to the release of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie. 25 one-foot-tall magnetic devices were created with the intention of being hung up in 10 major markets, including Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles. Using an LED circuit board powered by 4D batteries, they featured images of Ignat and Ur flipping the bird, often compared to the toy Lightbrite. I hope you can see this because I'm doing it as hard as I can. These were recurring characters from the TV series known as Moonanites. With thanks to Urban Dictionary, Moonanites hail from the center of the moon, obviously. They're a race of pixelated aliens from the inner core of Earth's satellite represented here by Ur and Ignanot. Two visual artists in their late 20s, Peter Radovsky, better known as Zebler, and Sean Stevens, were hired by Interference to install nine devices in locations around Boston, Cambridge, and Somerville in mid-January of 2007, and all went as planned. Fans posted photos of the Mennonites online, recognizing them in Portland, Washington, and Chicago, but not Boston.
It all started around 9 a.m. when a passenger aboard an MBTA bus told authorities that she saw a suspicious device attached to a support beam for I-93 northbound. That device and how it got there is now under investigation. The Longfellow Bridge, I-93 North, the Orange Line, the Red Line, the Charles River. All traffic through these locations was shut down and rerouted after police received nine reports of suspicious packages around the city. The first was spotted by a Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority employee placed on a girder at the Sullivan Square station. At least two devices were detonated by a bomb squad as a precaution, while police rushed to highways, hospitals, universities, and train stations to secure the packages. These were spots with high visibility, but also high foot traffic, making it a top priority to discover the nature of these devices. Well, don't be surprised if I call the cops on your ass. The Mooninites were obscure characters within Aqua Teen Hunger Force itself, meaning that only a small number of citizens were able to recognize them. If you talk to anybody close to college age, and explain to them what was found, and they knew exactly what it was, a Moonanite character from the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, a cartoon on the Cartoon Network. You tell him, Jorge. Even the show's creators were baffled at how unrecognizable the characters were to those outside their target audience of teens and young adults. The first few hours of news coverage, they kept thinking it was SpongeBob. Jerry, there's a bomb strapped to my chest! Considering that a quarter of a million people attended colleges and universities in Boston at the time, this overblown reaction to what some could easily identify as an advertisement drew attention to a generational divide within the city. I was not alarmed at all. I thought that it was some sort of installation piece. I, didn't, I forgot that there was the movie coming out and I didn't realize that it was, it was part of the, the marketing campaign. Um, I thought it was all very exciting and I didn't, I didn't feel scared at all. I wasn't intimidated. I, I knew it was a moon night. It looked like a, a cartoon character. It was, it was kind of funny. In a post 9-11 world, who puts cartoon characters attached to batteries on bridges around Boston? Some sort of moron? After hours of coverage, Cartoon Network's then-parent company, Turner Broadcasting, issued a written statement through email at 4.50 p.m. The packages in question are magnetic lights that pose no danger. We regret that they were mistakenly thought to pose any danger. Turner would pay Boston $2 million, $1 million for deploying emergency workers, and $1 million to support safety education and security programs, making this one of the most expensive guerrilla marketing campaigns ever. It would, said the congressman, be hard to dream up a more appalling publicity stunt. Whoever thought this up needs to find another job. Yeah, like that's gonna happen. Oh, it happened. As a way for Turner to take accountability for their actions, Executive Vice President and General Manager of Cartoon Network Jim Samples announced his resignation on February 9th feeling a deep sense of responsibility for allowing this to happen under his leadership. It's believed that after Sample's absolutely perfect six-year run, Cartoon Network went entirely downhill and was never good ever again. Here's a pedantic mistake I noticed. ABC7 covered this story in front of the Cartoon Network Studios building in Glendale, even though Aqua Teen and its film were produced and promoted through their headquarters in Atlanta. I don't blame an LA-based station for filming in front of a nearby building with the words Cartoon Network written on it. That's probably what I would have done. But also, like, go to Georgia. I made, made in Georgia. Digging through all this old coverage was worth it for the overly dramatic on-screen graphics and to see which stations dared not to censor the Moon Knight's middle fingers. My favorite find was Shepard Smith's stone-faced reaction to Aqua Teen Hunger Force facts he messed up, which a fan corrected him on through an email sent during a commercial break. You can even hear someone in the studio laughing in the background. I stand correctedly. They're not Moon Knights, but human-sized fast food icons. We regress the error, regret it sincerely, and are thankful it did not shut down any major, major roads, bridges, trains, or rivers. Peter Burdovsky and Sean Stevens were arrested for placing the hoax devices and for disorderly conduct. They pled not guilty and were advised by their lawyers to not speak publicly about the event, leading them to swiftly change the subject whenever questioned by the media. What we really want to talk about today, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of important to some people. It's uh, haircuts in the 70s. Yeah, we, we really we want feel, to discuss the style we, of them. We feel it's really important because we think it's been a big inspiration on how people live their lives today. It's such a beautiful day to be outside. I think you should all enjoy that. The pair walked out on $2,500 bail after their judge ruled that Brodowski and Stevens did not intend to create panic. Their charges were dropped after they completed over 60 hours of community service at Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital. That community service included creating this mural for children. 
clearing off the docks and working with the kids. And they've left a really good impression with us. I was one of those folks stuck in traffic and I still forgive them. The reception to this bomb scare influenced Ted Kennedy to introduce the Terrorist Hoax Improvement Act of 2007 to the Senate. This bill would severely punish those associated with hoaxes for spreading false information and wasting government resources, but it failed to reach a vote, thereby influencing me to spread pointless information and waste my resources. Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters would go on to make $5.5 million at the box office, surpassing its $750,000 budget. However, its failed advertising campaign made Boston a laughing stock, especially in the eyes of online bloggers. Those demotivational poster memes must have really hit a nerve. If you haven't been paying attention to the web, there's a lot being said about us, and a lot of it is not very complimentary. The actions taken by the Boston Police Department were defended by Commissioner Edward Davis. The city clearly did not overreact. Had we taken any other steps, we would have been endangering the public. Time and time again, it was mentioned that no other city where the devices were placed showed as much concern, with many feeling that the shutdown of Boston was an overreaction. The point is, is that if the police had put out a picture of this, if the media, which had the pictures, wasn't pixelating it, people who do watch the show would have known exactly what it was before lunch. A street artist mocked the incident by randomly placing stickers on ATMs and parking meters that read, don't panic. This is not a bomb. MIT students draped a banner across the front of a building, detailing diagrams of a bomb in the Moonanites, labeling one as a bomb and the other as not a bomb. Fans of the show stood outside the Charlestown District Court where Brodowski and Stevens were tried with signs that read, laws are not illegal or 13107, never forget, attempting to bring levity to the situation. We're just a bunch of people that think this is a huge overreaction and rather silly. 15 years later, the Moonanite Panic encapsulates both the political and pop culture landscape of 2007, serving as a cautionary tale for future guerrilla marketing campaigns. Interference Inc. posted an apology on its website two days after the devices were spotted in Boston and did not lose any clients or employees due to their involvement. But according to Dennis Adamovich, former senior vice president of marketing at Turner, There are now protocols in place so this thing will never happen. Systems have changed. The way we market has changed. Aqua Teen Hunger Force itself would acknowledge this stunt in an incomplete episode planned for its fifth season, simply titled Boston. It had the Aqua Teens travel to Boston to advertise an online auction for meat wad that's misconstrued as a bomb threat. All right, just wedge yourself in that dark corner, because this is prime real estate. Turn on your tiny magnetic lights. That way, you look more like a device. Zora Zora. They mock the light break comparison, Boston's relaxed security, the failed attempts by fans to sell the Moonanite devices, but also Baltimore. As a former Maryland citizen, their interpretation of the city was spot on. Boston is a bomb! You think I don't know that, you dumb cast of the musical hairspray! Seeing the crude animation of this series in an even rougher state is very funny to me, but the episode might have been finished for the 11th and final season. The crew planned on releasing it far into the future, but those plans fell through after it leaked on January 31st, 2015, eight years after the hoax. Higher-ups at Adult Swim didn't like the drafts of the script that were submitted, probably due to how cops were portrayed after all the damage control that Turner did. Well, in a post-9-11 world, things aren't always what they appear to be. What's going on? what I miss? Oh my god, it's a bomb! Put down the sandwich and walk away! More recently, Adult Swim showcased their stance on the event in one of their signature bumpers. Both Peter Radovsky and Sean Stevens continued to create visual art, and while Stevens moved to San Francisco to create a nonprofit space for artists, Radovsky stayed in Boston, becoming an assistant professor at Berklee College of Music. On New Year's Eve 2013, he performed a light show in Copley Square as a part of the First Night Festival, being honored to pay back the city, a decision that Boston Mayor Tom Menino defended, even though he originally threatened the culprits with at least a year of jail time for every device they installed. Some people want to make headlines out of it. You know, we have a forgiving city. This guy made a mistake, we're moving forward. This scenario likely would have played out differently today in the age of social media. But honestly, this wasn't even the scariest marketing tie-in that Aqua Team was involved in. You ever see their Simpsons movie promo? Adult Swim presents Homer, Marge, Lisa, Bart, Maggie, 
Mr. Burns, Smithers, Krusty, Barney, Lenny, Carl, Grandpa, Apu, Wiggum, Milhouse, Nelson, Ralph, Selma, Addy, Bumblebee, Maddie, Willie, Jimbo, Skinner, Otto, Rockman, Reverend Lovejoy. In a sneak peek, a couple of weeks in the making. These advertisements may have been in the wrong place at the wrong time, but they displayed the importance of cultural awareness, especially when it comes to being knowledgeable of new media and stressors affecting certain regions. It pays to be overly cautious, but it can come at the cost of looking absolutely ridiculous. You'll remember my next guest from their zany stunt to promote Cartoon Network's animated alien characters called Moonities. Yeah.